peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus. Amen. The text is from Isaiah, the seventh chapter. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Shall call his name Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. This is the text. I noticed one of the candles that Pastor Asbury was referring to is called the candle of hope. I'm wondering how that hope was kept alive all the way from the Garden of Eden in Genesis till the birth of Jesus, the King, the Messiah. Required a sign. We used to pasture our cattle in, in Chambers, Nebraska, west of Chambers. On the way there, when we were hauling out there, there was a small, neat Presbyterian church, a brick church. It was very nice looking. And right by the church, there was a sign that said, don't wait until it takes six strong men to bring you into church. And then we came home and saw the back of the sign. But when we checked the cattle a month later, that sign was gone. And there was another one that said simply, well, you ask for a sign. God. I had to ponder that for about 10 miles before it sunk in. The word for sign in the Greek is semi. It's also the word for test. The Bible says, Jesus said, when he stood on the pinnacle of the temple to Satan, you shall not test the Lord your God. Satan had said, cast yourself down, for he said he will give his angels charge over you to bear you up, lest you cast your foot against a stone that he left out in all your ways. So if you got go out of your way, don't look for angels. This is for folks who love to walk in the way of the Lord, angels, to guard and surround you like they did the whole camp of Moses through 40 years. A sign and a test. And God doesn't want to be tested. But sometimes he's willing to be tested under just the right circumstances. Anybody remember Gideon? He was a lowly fellow of the house of Benjamin, I think. But he was not... Uh, highly regarded. His father had a tree that was dedicated to the Baal God, God of the Canaanites, Midianites. One day when the Spirit of God filled Gideon, he chopped down the tree. Next morning the whole village was against him. And his father stood up for his son Gideon. And the Lord spoke to Gideon and said, I'm going to allow you to be the leader in the fight against Syria and the Midianites. Now the Midianites were the children of Keturah, which was Abraham's third wife. They were enemies of Israel. So, the Israelites were so fearful of the Midianites that they would stomp out their grain in the wine vat. Gideon was found stomping grain, milling grain in the wine vat because he was hiding from the Midianites because they would come up at night and destroy livestock and crops and plunder the land like locusts. The Lord visited Gideon. Said, I'm going to make you the implement by which the Midianites will be 
put away. We'll no longer plunder this land. And Gideon says to God, May I ask for a sign? You've read this story. Gideon says to God, How about if I put out a fleece, the hide of sheep with the wool on it, and in the morning there's dew on the fleece? God said, Okay. In the morning, Gideon looked, and there was water on the fleece, but the ground around was dry. Gideon said, that's great. Bear with me. May I ask for yet another sign? God said, okay. And Gideon said, could it be that tomorrow morning the fleece is dry, and the ground around it has dew on it? God said, okay. Next morning, Gideon looked, and the fleece was dry, and the ground around it had the dew of the night on it. Gideon said, okay, I'll be your man. That was the sign that Gideon asked, and God went for him. Now remember, the word for sign is also the word for test. God was a little fussy with this. He said, don't put God to the test. But sometimes God offers to put himself to the test and to offer a sign. For example, if you look at the last book of the Old Testament in Malachi, when the people are beginning to fall away again and depart from God's program, God says to them, the only time in the Bible he offers a reward for keeping his path, for keeping his way. He says, test me in this. Very few times God says, test me. It's the same word, test, sign. Test me in this. Bring the whole tithe into the temple. By the way, Thank you for doing that over the last few weeks. Did you look at the chart in the bulletin? When it made the appeal went out for bringing the tithe into the temple? How the chart showed income greater than expenses? Thank you, thank you. God said, bring the whole tithe into the temple. Test me on this and see if I will not fill up your silos to overflowing. I always get a kick out of it. About this time of year, earlier in the fall, in November, October, you go to the coffee shop in Battle Creek or Tilden or Newman Grove, and there are farmers sitting in there complaining because they don't have enough storage for the grain they got coming in. I always say, oh, I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> you don't have enough storage because the Lord Filled your bin to overflowing? How sad. That's what he says. And of course, your tithe is everything you give for the church, for the poor, for the needy, for the broken, for the widow, the orphan. I've tested this. It really works. It's amazing. Bring the whole tithe into the temple. Test me in this and see if I'll fill up your silos beyond their capacity to hold it. Remarkable. There was another time God went to his prophet Isaiah, instructed Isaiah to go to offer a test to the king of Judah, Ahaz. So Isaiah goes to Ahaz and he says to him, ask the Lord for a test. Now this is not common. This occurs a few times in the scripture. Isaiah says, ask the Lord for a test. Ask the Lord for a sign. And Ahaz says, Moses said, don't test the Lord. I'm not going to ask him for a sign. And Isaiah says, okay. I'll ask God to provide you for, for a sign. Now, mind you, this is 700 years. We talked about hope hanging on. Messiah is coming, Messiah is coming, hang on. 
700 years before the fact, Isaiah said to Ahaz the king in providing a sign, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Call his name Emmanuel. And he shall eat curds and honey when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. Now Ahaz was worried sick that Syria was going to attack and little Judah, the kingdom, would be destroyed. And Isaiah goes to him and says, okay, since you don't want to ask God for a sign, God will give you a sign. Here's what's going to happen. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, shall call his name Emmanuel. This is Messiah Jesus, 700 years down the road. Emmanuel, God with us. And he shall, here's the riddle, he shall eat curds and honey. He knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. What's that mean? It means when the child gets to the age of discernment, he'll be eating the food of peace, not the food of war. Orphan Grain Grain sent 52,000 pounds of flour into Ukraine, into an area occupied by the Russians, and it succeeded and they made bread. God says to Isaiah, tell Ahaz the king, Father, Lord, not Baal. And by the time the child that I'm anticipating is old enough to be discerning, he will be eating the food of peace. And lo and behold, Isaiah went home his wife conceived and bore a son, and they called him Mirshel Hashbaz. Because Ahaz refused to believe. Mirshel Hashbaz, the name of Isaiah's son, means the prey hastens toward the villain. The sinner hastens toward the sin. The plunder hastens to be plundered. Meaning, Judah, 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 why do you continue to run after the gods of Baal who act as for sacrifice and prostitution? Why do you run towards sin? So in the short term, God's sign was, be careful, Judah. Do not continue running after false gods. Run after me. Otherwise, the Babylonians will pursue you. But before they leave home, you will pursue them to be devoured by them. Very woeful. Very stern warning. But even after the whole Babylonian episode was over, Judah returned 586 years later. I looked it up. How old is the United States? What do you think? Do the math. 1776. 246 years. These people waited 586 years for their hope to be fulfilled. They lived in Babylon, no king, no church, no worship, no sacrificial system, no king, no deliverer. And once Mary believed and accepted the promise of hope offered to her, let it be unto me, Lord, as you have announced. She journeyed with her husband, Joseph, to Bethlehem. And what did the angels sing? Behold, while the shepherds were abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flocks by night, a host of angels appeared singing, Glory, God with us. The presence of God is back. The King is back. Our hope is restored. 
Messiah is here, our forever King, Emmanuel, God to live with us. Wonderful stories. You got to dig them out. They're back there. They're back there in the back part of the book. But they all hold together. That's what's so convincing about the scriptures. It fits together like a precise arithmetic formula. It all fits and concludes in this magnificent event of this son being born to Mary. He's Emmanuel, God with us. Our hope is alive. The sign of the Lord is present among us. Amen. Peace of God that passes our understanding, keep our hearts bound in Christ unto life. Amen.